wants to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life. So you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ. Welcome to a dynamic and life-transforming program impacting generations with the Word of God. Christ has been made our wisdom. He's Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. He's not just the power without the wisdom. And it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power. Because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is Fenero Make Manners with Apostle Grace Huber. Now we're going to take our reading tonight from uh, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. The Bible speaks of a man called Elijah, which was a Tishbite, or Tishbite, uh, who was all of the inhabitants of Gilead. He goes to a king called Ahab, and he tells him, as long as the Lord liveth, uh, he, there shall be no dew, no rain these years, according to my word. This is a prophet speaking to the king, Ahab. Now, to give you a little foundation on this, uh, biblical scholars say that ancient scripts have spoken of days in Israel where rain did not come naturally. There were rainmakers. And there was a group of people which were sorcerers, deep magic and very dark, dark, dark places of witchcraft were established in Israel. The kingdom of Israel at that time under Ahab and Jezebel had submitted itself to demonic work. The prophets that led Ahab and Jezebel were demonic prophets. So in that time, there is a challenge of the prophets saying that as long as the Lord of Israel liveth before whom I stand, this is Elijah, he says, there shall be no dew, no rain these years, according to my word. So Elijah is trying to provoke and challenge the way of the rainmaker to see that if as a prophet he has pronounced that there shall be no rain for these years, let us see whether there is any man able to chisel rain out of the cloud. Praise God. So you must understand, Jezebel, Ahab, which were all submitted to the dark world at that time, needed to be challenged by a voice higher than any prophetic voice of that time. Are you following me? So he did not just say, you know, I've made up my mind. I'm going to stop the rain from falling as a way of punishing. That's not the heart of God. The Bible says he gives rain <laughs> and bread both to the righteous and the heathen. So it was not the intention of God to deny people meat or drink. Somebody shout hallelujah. But we know what happens when there's no rain. It means you cannot grow anything. It means there's going to be a famine. Again, God is putting us in check, especially ministers, not to think that the authority of God on our lives is just available for us to show off simply because we can. I've seen people who are quoting 1 Kings 17 uh, in the place of Elijah, and he says, because he says, according to my word, somebody goes out of the boundaries of the liberties of God because they have no wisdom in how to execute power, and you find somebody stopping something that is not in the will of God to stop because he or she wants to make a statement of the anointing of God upon their lives. That is error. That is turning stone into bread. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, this was a challenge on the side of the prophetic because God, through Elijah, wanted to establish the supremacy of his person to Israel. So, when he says, for the God that I stand before, as long as um, th that Lord liveth, of whom I stand before, there shall be no dew, no rain, these, uh, 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 all these years according to my word, the Bible tells us, and it was so. And verse 2 says, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith 
that is before Jordan. This is God instructing the prophet. That even though the prophet has pronounced judgment over Israel, and there shall be no rain, no dew for those years, because it is in the will and purposes of God, we see God leading his prophet to hide at the brook Cherith, where he shall feed or provide for him, which is uh, before Jordan. The Bible says, uh, verse 4, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, because it has water, and I have commanded the, the ravens to feed thee there. And so verse 5 says, He went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherish, that is before Jordan. Verse 6 tells us, And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Oh, before I even preach, there a principle has been given of how much a human being should eat. You see? Biblical principle on how much a human being should drink or eat. God created man with a conscience enough of how much man needs because he is God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you see, the prophet receives ravens bringing him bread and flesh in the morning. That's the first meal. And the ravens are bringing him bread and flesh in the evening. So two meals are enough for a normal human being. I'm saying that because some of you eat the whole day. You eat in the morning, you eat at break time, 10, midday, and then you eat at one lunch, then you have evening tea with a snack, and then you have to eat dinner at 9 and 10, and then you're asking yourself why your body is out of order. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh yes, look at the children of Israel when God was giving manna. He gave them manna in the morning, and he gave them manna in the evening. If you eat two meals a day, they're enough for you. That's healthy. If you go beyond that, God help you in Jesus' name. So anyway, so at the Brook Cherith, God sends rabbit, ravens, and these ravens are bringing flesh and what and bread for the man of God. Now, here is the emphasis of the sermon today. Verse 7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now, now, that's where I want to start preaching from. The brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. I am in the perfect will of God. I am a servant of God. And a situation has happened in the world by the leading of the Spirit. But God, in that feminine drought, He has provided a place of provision for me as his son or daughter, while we wait for that time to pass, it's still incumbent on Elijah to wake up one day and say, I think, let me pray for this thing to return. But he is not inspired by the Holy Spirit to do it. Now he is in the provisions of God. He is not sowing, but he is reaping. He is not hunting, but he is eating flesh. He is not digging or tilling the ground, but he is eating bread. And there is water at the brook. Somebody shout hallelujah. And in that comfort of the provisions of God, of the consistency of the spirit, of the routine that a man sits in, the predictable sort, the man is comfortable, careless in the care of God, and established in the providence of Almighty, and then he wakes up one day and the brook is dried because there is no rain. Now a believer starts, what did I do wrong? Why did I get it wrong? Did I hear God? Didn't I hear God? Am I in the perfect will of God? If I'm in the perfect will of God, wh what am I supposed to do? The brook is dried. If God is the one who sent me here, why is the brook dry? I don't know whether I'm in the perfect will. I'm starting to doubt whether it was even the will of God for me to stop the word, the, 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 the rain. I'm starting to doubt whether God is still with me. Where have I sinned? And they start putting spiritual thermometers on their hearts to see, to diagnose their issues. Where have I gone wrong? How wrong have I been? What have I done? How, where am I? You understand? 
and, 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 and let me tell you something. Whether it's your doing or not your doing, there are seasons in our lives that can place us in a routine of genuine, genuine predictability in the provisions of God that one day when one thing in that provision changes, we don't know what to do. There is a person right now in the world who is so used to receiving money from an individual Every month he said that I'll be sending you 100,000 or 200 or 4 million every month. And there's a consistent provision. You, uh, yes, this is God who led them. It impressed on the heart of that man or woman to provide for you. Probably their guardian or their sponsor, whatever it is, education or their partner, business partner. And somehow God impressed it on their hearts to consistently. I'm talking about the consistent provisions that come so timely and routine that you get so comfortable and become so convinced that this is just how life is supposed to be. Somebody shout amen. So they send the first month. One year they are sending. And then one day you wake up and they've not sent the money. They've not sent it. And believers fall. There was a person who used to favor you consistently it was not a one-time favor but every month or every year th there is a raven that used to come for you in the point of your need and it was beyond your sowing it was beyond your tilling it was beyond your hunting and this raven is consistently coming to you and you wake up one day and the brook is dried or no, the raven is not coming anymore somebody shout hallelujah and then some people at that particular point, they start to doubt. You had a job or have a job. And then one day the company tells you, you know what? Due to some unavoidable circumstances, we are not able to keep you. Our expenses have gone to the roof or our partners cannot come through <laughs> or you've, you've got into your age of retirement. We cannot keep you and we cannot provide for you anymore. This was a raven. This was a brook. In the time of the famine without. And then questions. Where is my next job? What am I going to do? How can I reverse this? Where did I go wrong? And these questions continue going around the heart of the believer for many years. If you do not know the way of God, you can sink that day. If you do not know the way of God, you can lose your faith and fall back to perdition. Some don't lose the faith and fall back to perdition. Some improvise without seeking the mind of God concerning their next place of destiny. And improvisions are so dangerous because the drama that is involved in improvision usually exposes human effort in the fulfillment of the purposes of God instead of God being allowed in your life to fulfill his promises, his way. Because provisions, sometimes our human provisions, replace the provision and mind of God concerning our destiny. Or some stay in cherished as long as the raven still brings flesh and bread. Now, scripture doesn't say that when the brook dried, the raven stopped coming. Some settle for less. Are you hearing me? He says, okay, there is no water. I've accepted. But the scriptures don't say that the raven stopped bringing bread and flesh. Perhaps maybe the raven could continue bringing flesh and bread. But you, you cannot live by flesh and, 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 and bread alone. You need water in your body. You cannot continue eating without drinking. And some settle for the flesh and the bread because the raven, the miracle of the raven is still happening in their lives. And one day they get to a point where they cannot move further because their biology cannot allow them to eat or, 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 or to eat without drinking. Their biology cannot allow them to live without water. And so they die with flesh and bread in their belly but without water in their body. And all of these are three possibilities when brooks dry when there are slight changes 
in the provisions of God. I know people who at their workplace receive letters the next day and they're demoted from one position to another. And if you do not know God, <laughs> that would be the beginning of your sinking because you can fall back into unbelief and doubt the way of God. Especially if you know that you're a person of principle. You know you've been giving your tithes right. You know you've been giving your principles right. You've been giving as the scriptures require. Your first fruits have been going through. And they demote you or they stop you from working or you're frustrated in your business or in your work. The biggest error for you as a believer is to doubt the God who took you to that brook and sent the ravens. He's not done with how to provide for you. But you see, you must understand that he is a God of seasons and times, of periods and, and, and timetables. And the wisdom to discern when the end of a season has come and the next season is coming your way. And how you respond to that can determine whether you are going to win or you're going to fail. In how you know God, in how you react to the changes of provision in a season, defines whether you're going to open a bigger door after that or you're going to be shut out for the rest of your life. In fact, some there could die at that experience. I know people right now who are destroyed, not because they were bad people, but because at the point when one thing closed or when everything closed, they did not know how to look up again. Somebody shout hallelujah. They did not know how to respond to the situation at that time. And many, I have said, failed. They failed. One time, a few pastors of mine know this story. I was not far away, not a few days ago. I was frustrated by somebody in the media world on one of our programs. Somebody frustrated my spirit on one of our programs. The media house frustrated an international one, one of the internationals. And in that pain, I went to God and I prayed and I asked him, do something to heal me because I know you are not done with the purpose of my ministry in this world. I know it. I don't doubt that this shakeup is going to sink. Uh, is, 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 is going to, I don't doubt that this, this shakeup won't sink me. I don't doubt it. I know that it can't sink me. I know who I am and wow, what he called me to be. But in there, in prayer, when I cast my care to God and I sought his voice on the same, Two or three days after that, God opened a bigger door. Somebody shout hallelujah. And soon I'm going to announce it. <laughs> soon I'm going to announce it. You're going to scream. Somebody shout hallelujah. But you see, I could have shut it if my eyes were closed from what God was doing. Sometimes you need brooks to dry, to look up for your next promotion. Because you see, sometimes in the, that consistent provision, the comfort of that provision might deceive you to think that that is where you're supposed to be. And sometimes God will close certain brooks because he wants you to seek him, for him to show you that there is another level and realm of provision that I have for you. But maybe I've shaken up this brook to make you uncomfortable enough to look where you must look. Hallelujah. I don't know whether somebody understood what I'm saying. For me, it was that check. And it opened a bigger door. Because I know the way of God. If one thing frustrates me, I know something bigger is going to come. If something wounds my heart, I know that there is a provision of God to heal me. I am the Lord's servant. He honors me. He honors me. He has never left me. He has never disappointed me. No man ever since I was born till now has ever fought me and won. No man. Because I don't fight. <laughs> Did somebody pick it? Because I don't what? I don't fight. I let him fight. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, 
Elijah is in the perfect will of God, but the brook is dry. It is dried. You are in the perfect will of God, but some letter has been received and it's posting you places that are going to frustrate everything, your family, your career, your, 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 your plans, your dreams, your aspirations, your whatever it is that you, is in your plan, it is frustrated because a letter has come, uh, 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 some, some instruction has come, some, some season has come, COVID came, and oh my goodness, Brooks dried during COVID. But let me tell you something. I am a witness that I have become richer in COVID season. There are people who have become richer. Recently, somebody sent me a small document that in the year of COVID 2020, the world registered more people becoming billionaires in dollars than the rest of human history in one year. The world recorded more people becoming billionaires in dollars than the history of any year in human history. Can you believe that? You might not know who those billionaires are in dollars, but they are there. <laughs> and if it is so for billionaires, then I believe that consequently there are more millionaires that have been made in 2020 than the rest of all the years before. This is, uh, what, where, where, where is it? Forbes wrote it. Forbes magazine. He wrote it. I was saying, I think almost every 17 seconds or something like that, a person became a billionaire in COVID season. Are you following what I'm saying? But in the same season, businesses have closed. Economies have been shattered. But you see, the issue is where were you? In COVID. I'm not talking about physical. <laughs> I'm talking about spiritual. Where were you in COVID season? As a ministry, we got more giving than there before. In COVID season. So yes, when there's a casting down, you shall say that there is a lifting up to the glory of God. And because Elijah hears God, the next verse tells us in verses 8, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. And he said, And behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. That is God. That for every brook that dries your way, there is another provision available for you. Can I say it again? That for every frustration your way, there will always be an e even better measure of provision that is available for you. Know where to look and what to do when certain things close. They, oh, if you understood this and you've gone through any shutting in the previous past, I would give you only three seconds to celebrate. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. Sing it one more time. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. I'm still preaching. Now, God tells the man, the brook is dried because your season at the brook is over. I have a bigger purpose for your life that is bigger than a dry brook, that is bigger than that appointment, that is bigger than that contract, that is bigger than that 
business deal. I have a plan for you that is bigger than that transaction. I have a plan for you that is bigger than that frustration of the hour. Can we now leave and walk together in this? So it's, oh, Rindo Bozileba. So he tells him, look, I have commanded a widow in Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, to feed thee. Now here is the mystery. Here is the mystery. When you read Hebrew, the language, the word Zidon or Zidon means hunting. The word Zarephath means refinery. Are you following me? The word Zarephath means refinery. And the word Zidon means, are you following me? It means what? It means what? Now, remember in Cherith, he was not hunting, but he had flesh for meat. He was not tilling the ground, but he had bread for food. And in God refining him, he sends him to a refinery which belongeth to hunters. Who, who is following what I'm saying? He is refining him to a place of hunting. Are you following what I'm saying? So one door has closed of comfort because ravens are bringing flesh of meat he has not hunted. They're bringing bread of a ground he has not tilled. The brook is bringing forth water naturally because it flows. And God has closed that season and is refining his servant to hunt. But in the hunting, he says, I have commanded provision already there to agree with your hunting. <laughs> Who understands what I'm saying? He, I, he's saying, I have provided a command in the spirit, prepared a waiting to embrace and align itself to the grace on your life to hunt. Now he finds a widow. The Bible says, he arose and went to Zarephus. And when he came to the gate of the city, Behold, the widow woman was there gathering oil, uh, gathering oil, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. Why is he asking for water? Because <laughs> if the druk has dried for some time, he's thirsty. The first thing he will ask is drink. Are we following? And then he continues, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son so that we may eat and die. Wait a minute. You said you commanded. A widow. I thought when I meet her and I said, go get me water and a muzzle of meat, she would say, yes, sir, the Lord had spoken to me. And this, <laughs> the woman God has commanded now starts to tell Elijah that I have only a meal enough for me and my son to eat and die. Again, the person which knows not God can die from there. Oh, he can even doubt the voice of God and go back to Cherith. <laughs> are you hearing me? You see how it's easy to fall? Yet you are instructed of God. Somebody shout amen. amen. She said, no, 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 no. I'm gathering a few sticks here. I have a little handful of a meal of barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And if I can just prepare that, I will eat for my son and I and we shall die. We have one more meal left. And the one with one more meal is the same God has commanded to feed the prophet. So then when or how did God command this woman? And this is the mystery. 
They which are refined of God in the hunting are prepared prior in instruction, whether they know it or they don't. Who got it? Who got it? Can I say it again? When a man is refined in the hunting, he is prepared for the instruction of God, whether he knows it or he doesn't. This was an example of a widow who did not know that she had been prepared by God. But because she lives in the realm of refined men, she lives in the realm of them which are sanctified of God, there is a predetermined experience in her soul that has prepared her even when her mind has not yet come to those terms because they which are refined are pre-instructed by God. That's prevenient grace. That is why we emphasize the justification through faith and the righteousness imputed. Because it's that sanctification, that refining of God that prepares instruction in us even when we don't know the exact instruction. But it worketh in our spirits at the time when the need of the word comes. At the time when Rema comes. Who is following what I'm saying? So a widow has been prepared by God and she doesn't know that she has been prepared by God. But Elijah knows that if I have met this widow and she is the one, there must be something unique about her. Even with one muzzle of meat, I know that there's something in her she yet does not know. That is why later, when, 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 when now Luke looks at it from the eyes of Revelation in Luke 4.25, he says there were many widows in Israel, but Elijah went to one. Meaning there was something unique about her, whether she knew it or she didn't. Can I say it again? He says that, I tell you a truth. Many widows were in Israel. He said, when the heaven was shut up, three hours and six months, when that feminine drought hit. But this man, Elijah, the Bible says, was sent to one particular widow in Sidon. One particular widow. There's something about this woman, whether she knew it or not, but there was something in her that was prepared as she was refined by the spirit in the hunting. Now I'm talking about the hunter. Now, Elijah has to hunt as a prophet. A prophet does not hunt like a teacher. A teacher does not hunt like a pastor. An apostle does not hunt like a prophet. Okay, let's get into your world. An engineer does not hunt like a doctor. A doctor does not hunt like a what? Like a teacher. Yeah? Hi, so a professor. Okay? A professor does not hunt like a what? Like a lawyer. There are principles that govern hunting. But when we get into identifying distinctly why we are called in the offices we are called, there is a wisdom that teaches us how we hunt in the way that we are called. Somebody shout, amen. They all wake up in the morning to go and work. But the realm of work and labor rewards differently. Jesus one time gave an example. I hired a man. He says in the morning. And I hired another one in the afternoon. And I hired another one in the evening, and one late in the evening, and I paid them the same. And a man with an evil eye looks at the master and he judges him and he says, uh-uh, we were working till, from morning till evening. Why is it that you have paid the guy who has worked late the same wage as you have paid us which worked from morning? And then God has to ask this man, is your eye evil because I am good? Now, one day, if I have the opportunity, I'll teach about what an evil eye is. Because it's a very, very, very ancient truth on what an evil eye is. What is an evil eye? Some Christians carry an evil eye. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, God now has to Put this man in his place to tell him, look, do not judge my mercy and grace. I choose to reward whoever I reward the way I want to reward. Why? Because the eye that has seen this, the way it has seen it, 
has no heart to understand the deeper revelation of why I rewarded all of these men differently. If you had come with the attitude of asking me why, I want to understand, why did you reward us the, different, the same way, even though we all work differently, but in a pure heart, I would give you the truth and help you understand why I've done it. But you have come with an evil mind because you feel that the man that I've hired last does not deny the pay that I, of the man that I hired earlier because you think I reward or I give wage according to what time a man is hired in my vine. Or you think that because you have spent 40 years in the gospel, therefore your ministry has to be a certain size. Because you think that you have worked in an organization for 30 years, your pay has to be higher than the clerk or the professional that was hired two weeks ago. And that's just not the way of life. When I was banking, there are people who I found in the same position, and up to now they're still in the same position, that I left them since I worked from 2008 until the time I quit about 2013 or 14. There are people who are still doing the same office. And I bet you I know some are still doing the same office where I left them. Are you hearing me? But we came in as clerks and by the time I left as managerial. You see that? But I cannot say that every man has gone that course. And it I mean that those who are not working or who are still in the same positions are not hard workers. They're hard workers, but there is a wisdom above hard work. There is a way of God above hard work. I'm not saying that God is against hard work, but the race is not to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong. That's just the teaching of, 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 of God. Neither bread to the wise or riches to men of understanding or favor to men of skill. But it says, but time and chance happens to them all. It's how you deal in the realm of time and chance, experiences and opportunities. Translated, time and chance, experiences and opportunities. I'm not talking about physical experiences. I'm talking about spiritual experiences because the experiences of the spirit are available for the redemption of time. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the opportunities available for us are available for our promotion, but you must know how to position yourself in the days when promotions are available. You must know how to position yourself before certain windows. That's why I preached the, the sermon, how to position yourself for success. Not many people know how. There's a person who has been asked, why aren't I being promoted? Why aren't I being promoted? Why am I in the same place? Why am I earning the same money? Why is my business bringing the same pay for over the years? I am trying to answer you now. Somebody shout amen. Back to the mystery. There's a uniqueness of a widow that has been refined of God. She's preparing her last meal, but because she does not, her mind does not understand what's done within her and for her, she thinks that she is on her last meal. Elijah knows that it's the beginning of her provision. Are you hearing me? If the widow of Zarephath had said no to the prophet because she looked at what she had at that particular point, she would have lost the provision for refined men. And this is what I learned. Write it if you can. If God ever provokes you to give more than you're able, then understand his position in you for what you could never get in your own ability. If he's asking for more than you can give, then he wants to give you more than you could ever mass receive or hunt for. Again, there are people who are not living in the overflow of the Spirit because at the point where God instructed them to give that cruise of oil and that handful of burial, they looked at sustaining themselves 
for that day with a hope that tomorrow as they die, another provision would come. And God is saying, I don't want you to think about that because tomorrow has its own to worry. That's just the way of the spirit for the children of God. You never worry about tomorrow. God will provide for tomorrow. If the instruction is of today, do it. When I was growing up back in those days, I used to have this thing in me, still in me, but now <laughs> since about 2013, it stopped because of something that opened to me. But before that, this is what used to happen. Many times when I found myself with little money and I would look at my plans and projections and I see that that was not enough to provide for the moment of my need or in the time when I would expect then perhaps my dad to send me pocket money or something like that. I usually phone over my next payday, I usually phone myself giving it all. Why? Because I hated the thought of luck. I hate the thought of not having sufficiency in the time when I need because I know that I'm a child of God. I just found myself, I, I would spend it like a rich man. And somebody said, but you're not wise. Why don't you plan this such that you have enough until the day of your provision? Why? Because every time it would come in my head to be conscious, to serve so I am provided for the next moment, I felt that I was not living under the provisions of the kingdom of God. And that's the truth. And many Christians live there. That's why you're going to stay broke for the rest of your life. Because, listen... God has not called you to a consciousness of lack, to plan as a man lacking. He said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches in glory in Christ Jesus. My riches, God's riches, not yours. And I remember as faithful, yeah, I was giving all these, but there were times, sometimes the needs were beyond the provisions that were available. But every time I got to a point where it was a hand meal, a little muzzle, and a cruise of oil, I just found myself giving it. Not that I was not a giver before, but I hated the consciousness of lack. And I remember that 2013, late that year, when God came in a vision and told me that the sun will never go down without a man putting money in your hands. And since that day, the sun has never gone down without a man putting money in these hands. I don't know how to lack. I have never been provoked to that ever again in my life. That's my story. Somebody shout hallelujah. Widows in Zarephath of Zidon are dying because they do not know how to deal when they don't have enough and the word of God has come. Now, I say that again with too much precaution because I know how many, many men of God, how many men of God have used 1 Kings 17 to manipulate and rob people of where even God has not spoken. That is why I will go on record. I have never stood before you to ask. Because the man which gives, the heart must be made up. If you learn to be a big giver, God provokes you to giving big according to how steady you are in your heart. How much you fear and love him enough to obey. God has to trust you to know that you can give anything and still be okay. Because when you get to a point where you have no peace because you possess a thing, then you should discern that you are in rebellion. Why do you lose peace when you have it? Maybe God had told you, take it to a widow X, take it to an orphan Y, take it to a ministry X, and you refused. So you're even losing peace in the provision of God. Isn't that? But that's, that's for another day. That is why I have never stood on the pulpit to fundraise. I don't fundraise. I don't do that. I have my reasons. You understand? Because so people don't think that I'm in need for your money. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I, God has looked after me well. And the ministry, he said, I will build this church and the gates of hell will not prevail. The opportunity that he gives you, do it as he leads. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to finish because of time. Now, because Elijah is instructed in the wisdom of God, he knows how to hunt as a prophet. Are you hearing me? Yes, I have only one meal, one barrel of meal, and me and my son shall die. He says, uh-uh. <laughs> Don't worry about that. 
He told her, fear not, in the 13th verse. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me after make for thee and your son. Say amen. And the scriptures tell us, for thus saith the Lord, Elijah says, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now, let me speak to people who are a bit liberated in the spirit. This is hard for someone who is just trying to understand God yesterday. When did God tell Elijah? Is it said that he has a vision? Is it said that Elijah has a vision that meat shall never run out in the household of the widow? No. The fact that he knows this is the widow and that God has commanded her to provide for the prophet, it is obvious that if he says that thus saith the Lord, he is following the prior instruction that she is commanded and she does not know. So the helper in wisdom, Elijah, which is informed in the hunting, if he says, thus saith the Lord, he has said because he commanded her. It's still in the boundaries of that liberty. Only the mature have understood this. So he has the boldness to say, thus saith the Lord God, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth the rain. Because it is confirmed in the spirit of Elijah that this is the woman to preserve him until the day the rains return. So he is bold enough to say, thus saith the Lord. We are allowed to speak certain ways in the realm of the prophetic because there's a prayer instruction that allows us to, by fraudness, shape the way of the words when we are prophesying to men or in the lives of men because there is a soonness, that critical wisdom that came through Rema to us, telling us what God has already spoken concerning a situation. Now, the wisdom to determine the mode of action, to apply the wisdom that has been spoken through Rema, it's up to the liberty of the spirit as God has trusted the prophet, the apostle, the man of God to execute. If you have understood it, then you're mature. Then you are mature. If you've not understood it, Pray that you understand it. Because if you don't, you'll never live in the liberty of the spirit. You'll never live in the liberty of the spirit. You will never know how to get this word, the word of God, logos, and chisel out rema. Because it's the same mystery with which we can read, by his stripes ye were healed. And I go to a man and I tell them, God says you will not die. Because this is not a proverb. Are you hearing me? It's a reality in the promises. And I'll teach about that one day. Because some people treat proverbs as promises. Not all proverbs are promises. Huh? For example, the book of Proverbs will say <laughs> that for hard labor, a man is rewarded. But not all who have labored are rewarded. So you can say, but if God says it in Proverbs, why is it that I'm not rewarded? Because Proverbs are not promises. Not all Proverbs are promises. Are you following? And to know the difference, to get that promise out of the proverb, or to know that this is simply a word of wisdom and not a proverb, and not a promise, there's a difference. But there are promises. There are promises. And he says, and by these promises, we partake of the divine nature. Isn't it? We connect to the God life. Now, he has said here in scripture that you will never run out of food. Like I will read and say, by his stripes ye were healed. And I get it in my spirit for a man suffering from cancer. And I walk to them and I say that you will not die and you live. And the person says, oh, when the apostle said that God said that I will live and not die. Indeed, I lived and did not die like the prophet had spoken it. But really, where did I get it? Because sometimes I don't hear God speaking it. But I can use the liberty of the word because I've known how to chisel rema out of logos. Those are liberties of the spirit. And you are allowed. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. But I want to bring this for a close. Not because I'm out of words. But because time is failing me. Now listen. The prophet needs to know how to hunt. And this. Is Elijah hunting. 
Why? Because in Cherith, he did not command a brook. God commanded it. In Cherith, he did not command a raven. God commanded the raven. Now the prophet has been taken to places of hunting in Zarephath. In the refining of God, God is telling him now to hunt. Prophet, I hunted for you by speaking. Speak for yourself this time. I'm not going to speak. I commanded her already in how she should behave herself before the anointed. Now when you get there, don't again look for me to speak. Speak, Elijah, because you are a prophet. He takes Ezekiel to a valley of dry bones. He asks him, can these bones live again? Only you, God, knoweth. And Ezekiel probably could be silly and think, huh, let me wait for you to do it. But God tells him, ah, son of man, you are prophetic. Prophesy to these bones. And did you know the gift of the prophetic is available for every believer? Not the office of the prophet, but the gift of prophecy is available for every believer in the New Testament dispensation. Now that is a liberty. Somebody shout hallelujah. So <laughs> provision has run out in cherries where God spoke. And I get stuck. Prophet, woman of God. You get stuck? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Oh, you go to the widow God has commanded and she has only one meal and then you get stuck? Uh-uh. That is the point where you must learn how to speak. Oh, the day they fire you is the day you stand up and say, Father, I thank you. Because in firing me, the word of God says that I'm coming from one realm of glory to another realm of glory. In spite of the end of my contract, you said I shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror through Christ which strengthens me. In spite of the fact that I failed in my interview, the Bible still says that thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and he maketh manifest the servant of his knowledge by art in every place. Elijah hunt! 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 Speak hallelujah! Speak to your body and tell it I will not die. Speak to your business and say this is not the end of my testimony. Speak to your career and say okay they might say that my contract has come to an end but the contract of God concerning his provision on my life has not ended for he said concerning my kingdom and everything that touches my realm he says they shall be increased to order it and to establish it with my judgments and he says and this the Lord the zeal of the Lord shall perform it there is a zeal of God available to increase you without end in spite of what is happening the mistake elijah would do was to think that god did not know that in spite of the fact that the widow had only one muzzle of food there was still something available to provide for the prophet and the next line says and they ate food for many days elijah was sustained for many days in her house. Even more, God knew before he sent Elijah from the brook, the brook is dried. Listen, oh, you're gonna love this. Ravens are no more needed because there's no water. Because there was a boy who was going to die one day. Because God walks backward. He goes to the end of a thing and comes back to begin it. Are you hearing me? Now there is a, and as true as the story is, the widow's son died. The widow's son died. And because there was a prophet available for they which are refined and are obedient in the hunting, the son received life. This is what I'm saying as I close. You're not done because your contract is done. You're not done because your business is closed. You're not done because your ministry is closed. The government closed churches in COVID. That, that's, that's not what closes Fanera. That's not what reduces our members. You're not done because your time has run out at the organization. You're not done because of that. No, you are done because you don't know how to hunt. 
The Bible says, with your mouth you're taken. <laughs> with your mouth you're judged. With your mouth you're condemned. Open your mouth and start hunting. Speak into that situation as we finish. Speak into your family right now. Speak into your business right now. Speak into your career right now. Speak into your vision right now. Speak into your aspiration right now. Speak into your convictions right now. Come on, speak, speak, speak as we're coming to a close. For he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper. Plans not to harm you. Plans of peace. To give you that expected end. I'm still the God that was, that is and shall be. I'm the same today, yesterday and forever. If I provided for Elijah, I will provide for you. If I open the door for my man of God, he will open a door for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that I shall never run out. I decree and I declare that I shall never run short. I decree that I will declare, I declare that I'll never be stocked out. I decree and I declare that I shall never lack. That at the point of every closure God will open a bigger door that is the God that I've believed I know how to hunt I know how to speak I'm refined in my conversations the Bible says that the communication of, of your faith becomes effectual as you acknowledge every good thing which is in you which is in Christ I decree and I declare that God delivers you tonight in your finances he delivers you tonight in your career he delivers you tonight in your body he delivers you tonight in your vision he delivers you tonight in your family he delivers you tonight in your ministry. He delivers you tonight in every aspect. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a man of praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. And now as I close, I want to give you an opportunity. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood for my sins and was raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you've made that prayer, go on for narrow.org slash salvation. Send in your testimony. I want to hear from you or call me on plus 256-200-999-405. It's flashed on the screens for you. And those of you who have received testimonies as well, go on for narrow.org slash testimonies or call me on plus 256-200-999-405. I have a prayer platform on for narrow.org slash prayer on the mobile application in the About Us section. You can go there and send in your prayer requests. I read them and I pray for you daily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I hope to see you on uh, Thursday broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Venero, make manners.